Hello everybody, um, it's great that you've all logged in today, it's great to see you all here. Um, this is uh, a webinar for Media Budget Index, um, just a precursor to starting the webinar. I'd like to introduce um, the speakers. Um, I myself, it's Jim Clark, Research Director at eConsultancy. Uh, you may have heard me at previous webinars, um, if not it's great to meet you uh, and I've got my contact details um, um, in this web in this presentation, if you want to get in touch later, I'm also joined by uh, Christian Bartons, um, who is the CEO and founder at Datalicious. Um, and Christian has, has logged in today. We've just waiting uh, with just a few technical issues this morning. So hopefully, Christian will be able to join us shortly. Now, um, just to give you a bit of an introduction to Christian, um, Christian has quite well traveled. He moved to Australia from Germany in 2002. Uh, he's worked across a wide range of different areas from technology, tourism to uh, marketing uh, roles in-house before founding uh, the company, uh, Datalicious. Um, and his mantra is that he strives to make data uh, accessible for non analysts which is, which is, I think is really key. And it sounds like uh, Christian might have, might have logged on there. Christian, can I hear you? Can you yes, hear me? Yes. Fantastic. I'm just working through your impressive bio here. <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, your, uh, Christian, it's, uh, your insight and experience is all around the world, which is fantastic. I know you've spoken at the Festival of Marketing last year, went down really well. Also, I know that you uh, obviously work in a lot of industry bodies to define best practice. So I think um, hopefully I've got everything down pat with this, with this intro, if there's anything you wanted to add. Yeah, look, um, thanks, Jim, for, for that quick intro, and, and welcome, everybody, to the webinar. Uh, maybe just a quick few words about Datalicious. Um, uh, you know, we, the company started in a, about 10 years ago. Um, we started uh, in web analytics. That's sort of our background. But over the last few years, migrated uh, more into the, the sort of media attribution, media optimization, media analytics space, and we now do a lot of work around media mix modeling, media attribution, specifically tracking the consumer's purchase path and finding out exactly what touch points are more likely to influence uh, a sale uh, or not. And so um, we always um, strive to innovate in that space. We've, we've done uh, various different studies uh, in Australia and in Asia on the topic and uh, uh, recently embarked on this journey to, to do a joint research piece together with um, uh, eConsultancy to really bring a bit more light to, to the imbalance between what, what marketers perceive uh, to be the right media mix versus potentially uh, what actually is the right media mix. So um, hopefully we can we can give you a few insights today, um, and I'll, I'll hand back to Jim to to tell you a little bit more about the study. Yeah, thanks very much. Good intro there, uh, Christian. So um, without repeating what Christian just said, um, uh, we obviously we explore we're exploring media habits and budget budget allocation across UK, US, EMEA, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. So fairly global in scope. Um, and we use a number of different research methodologies. So phase one, um, our desk research assessed uh, publicly available data to get an insight into that question on budget allocation and time question. Uh, we then conducted in phase two, 13 in-depth interviews across the regions under review. So these were very senior contacts, uh, some of which included the director of global agency development at Facebook, the head of marketing at Southeast Asia, at MasterCard, as well as the CMO at HelloFresh Australia. And you're going to see um, some of those uh, interviews featured in the webinar today uh, in terms of their comments. Uh, we then qualified these interviews and also the desk research with uh, an online survey of marketers. And we covered them in pretty much the same areas we did the desk research, albeit within Singapore, India, United States, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. So just to kick off, um, I think putting, putting some of this in context, you've probably heard of this quote before. It's attributed to one or two people. But I think it's uh, most likely John Wanamaker, at least from the consultancy perspective. He claimed that 50% of his marketing budget was wasted. He just didn't know which half. Now, the media landscape today is so fragmented that the 50% you wasted yesterday could well be money spent today and vice versa. So the question is, are we still fighting the tension between offline and digital? You know, have we finally found a way for each media element to live together? Um, now, I think that, as, as, as Christian alluded to, we, you know, this, this 
webinar today uh, is based on the report which debunks a number of myths that have become uh, accepted wisdom over the last couple of years, uh, in particular around mobile, some interesting findings from there. Um, the, the fact that it isn't perhaps the cure-all uh, across regions that we thought it would be. Uh, at the same time, we found uh, traditional, less, uh, less regarded channels, like Point to Sale, seeing a quite, quite resurgence, um, which can actually prove a make-or-break element in, in campaign success. So this section looks at the highlights from um, our survey um, of marketers, and that's sort of going around the other way around. This is actually phase three, but from a webinar perspective, it worked very well from the flow. So the first part is, you know, which, which factors best describe your organization's approach to allocating digital marketing spend? Um, you could say there's an undeniable trend towards uh, digital worldwide, um, particularly for the UK. Um, the IAB uh, showed a growth of 16.4% uh, in 2015 to over 8.6 billion, and that is the highest rate since 2008. So when it comes to allocating these digital media budgets, the majority of decisions are based on incremental change uh, from previous budgets, and that's depending on performance. Um, surprisingly, we found that only a third of executives surveyed globally are actually basing decisions on customer time spent in channel, uh, with an even smaller proportion basing decisions on sort of things such as ROI reports from attribution modeling. I guess, I guess giving a little bit more background on this and our, and our thinking behind the study here, so the kind of services that we offer in Australia is exactly the, the, the establishment of exact ROI by media channel, all the way down to a keyword level, uh, an individual display ad. So that's what we really excel at. But without selling that into a client, it's very hard to do that on a broad scale. So one of the reasons for this study was we wanted to find a proxy for showing how unbalanced some of these media mix uh, uh, potentially are. Hence what we did is we compared um, where marketers spend their media dollars versus where, where consumers actually spend their time as the closest proxy to, to showing how potentially off these media, media mixes um, actually are around the world. Hence, it was interesting to see here um, how many people are actually using time spent to allocate media, okay? Yeah, good, good point there. Um, and I think this next slide sort of explores in a bit more detail. Is your organization ever able to measure the time spent on channels? And I think this this, this state of play should certainly frustrate executives who have the information on hand. You know, our survey found a third of respondents said they had a good idea of where customers spend their time. Uh, and a further 49% stated they were able to measure to a degree, but not across the board. Now, not shown here, but um, when it comes to Asian executives, looking a bit more from a regional perspective, um, this, this, this group of marketers had the most confidence in their ability to monitor customer time. And by comparison, the UK was the least confident in this area, uh, with a quarter of executives saying that they couldn't do so. And as I'll show later in the deck, I think there's a bit of a link here, because we found that the UK performed particularly poorly when matching consumer time with media budget allocation. Well, there was something of an opposite effect for Asia. Uh, you know, in this case, time spent in channel is a vital metric for, for these Asian digital uh, media spend planning, uh, and that's agreed by over half of executives in the region. So where do, where do marketers believe customers are spending their time? That's just quite interesting to get the perspective of marketers here. Um, and this covers online and offline. So you know, marketers really believe that consumers are spending the majority of their media time in the web channel. And this comes out quite clearly at the top there, with 66% uh, putting it down as their first, second, and third choice. Only 12% of marketers believe customers spend the majority of their time in the TV channel. And that's the first choice here, it's the second box to highlight it. Overall, it's 25% first, second, and third choice. Um, and as you can see here, right at the bottom, um, radio is performing particularly poorly in the minds of, of marketers, and this is consistent across regions. Um, so here, so here, here's where it for us gets controversial at Datalicious. I look at the previous slide where people say, Okay, only 25% really know what the ROI is of their various different media investments. So only 25% of people could have really made a statement 
on this question. They actually know what works and what doesn't. However, every single person, every single marketer has an actual opinion. In fact, there's very, very strong opinions on what works and what supposedly doesn't work without there actually being any underlying uh, uh, statistics behind it or proper, proper math. And that, that's what we really found quite fascinating. There seems to be these really strong perceptions of what works and what doesn't, not backed up by any serious measurement. And that's what, what, what this study is really going to highlight, and, and I think Jim is going to get into that a bit more. Yeah, I think that there was one particular element that surprised us linked to that. was There was something of a mobile mystery. Um, as you, this is the same chart that you can see on the previous slide, just highlighting mobile and app. Now, if you look particularly at, at that point as, as a first choice, only 7% of respondents you know, put that put that down, um, and cumulatively, cumulatively across all choices, that total is 27%. And you know, while while it's significant, that seems particularly particularly low considering the column inches devoted to mobile, and, and obviously the amount of conversations I have with clients about the channel. And this was a similar picture across the majority of regions, and, and perhaps a little bit more inexplicable in the UK, which is the highest penetration of mobile and, and all very, very much connected with, with uh, high-speed 4G um, connections, uh, with only 12% ranking in the, in the top three choices. And that's not shown here on the particular chart you can see. Again, not shown in the chart, but uh, looking at Asia in particular, they lead the field when it comes to mobile. Um, although you, you would have thought that it should be more than 32%, which was the result that came back from the research. Um, and Perhaps you know, given given mobile's greater predominance here, it makes it clear why the likes of China are particularly leading the charge when it comes to moving marketing dollars into the likes of WeChat and other platforms of its type. Now, we interviewed the global CMO of Just Eat on this, and he talked about how his firm is increasing spend in all markets across mobile, uh, particularly Facebook which to his mind offered a platform um, not just for app downloads, but also a great, great marketing channel. Now, what, what we found particularly vexing, I think we all can, we, we as marketers, we can all buy into the fact that mobile is very important. We, we're using our, our devices like crazy every day ourselves. We know that our consumers spend time there. But from an attribution perspective, um, we find this statement extremely surprising because really, cross-device attribution, like being able to track an ad exposure on a mobile device and track that all the way back to a conversion in retail or on the desktop computer is a technological thing that's very, very hard to do. So a tiny, a tiny minority of marketers probably have that figured out. It's very, very hard to achieve. So extremely difficult to really prove that the mobile channel is actually working and sort of underlines the earlier statement that I think a lot of marketers are really acting uh, by gut feel. Um, which obviously is great if you have that, but um, uh, if you're spending millions and millions of dollars, it'd probably be nice to have a little bit more backup than, than just your gut feel. Absolutely. Um, so, point there. So, this is um, based on the same question, uh, but a bit more visual. It compares and contrasts results by regions and gives us a bit of a broader view uh, in terms of the channels where uh, consumers are spending most of their time. Um, TV comes up top in terms of percentage check share of media time at 21%. Um, in uh, in uh, Asia, um, um, both Austra Asia and Australia and New Zealand have similar rates of time spent on websites. Now, EMEA leads other regions overall in terms of percentage share of time spent on websites, and this is followed by the US at 56%, so very similar trends there. Um, across EMEA, uh, in particular, paid social features very significantly, and that's twice the rate of the UK. Um, now, email, email, which is something you know we thought was going to go away a couple of years ago with the rise of messenger platforms and uh, other forms of communication, uh, it's remained in a stalwart for marketers. Um, is, is a channel where um, most time is spent in Australia and New Zealand, and that's twice the rate of Asia and the UK. So there's a considerable difference between those regions. So it's an interesting sort of getting down to the brass tacks here. What are marketers' budgeting priorities? Um, you know, taking account in the previous slides, it's clear that marketers 
uh, believe in their gut that web remains the channel where, where customers reside and, and perhaps unsurprisingly this is, this is reflected in the results here. 56% of marketers put this as uh, one of the three choices. Um, so it's a, it's a really top budget priority. We interviewed one US based marketer who was talking about how he'd previously relied entirely on SEO but that this is actually quite reactive. Um, you know, while it's great to, um, to use when you've got intent to convert, uh, when that's quite strong, you have to actually go out and reach users too. And I think there's an indication when seeking customers, it's possible some marketers have perhaps lost sight of where they should be focusing. Um, you know, they should be thinking about mobile, which is a bit further down the list here, 21%. You know, one New Zealand-based interviewee commented that in, in many big corporates, you know, having the budget to research to the nth degree is inefficient and that actually common sense can be just as good, which was an interesting perspective there. Now, the, the, the previous slides plotted out proportion of budgets allocated to specific channels and, and where marketers thought consumers were spending their time. And here you can see these plotted out both at the same time for the UK. So the previous slides were looking at it from a more global perspective. As you can see here, paid search, websites, um, and email on the left. Um, now these are, these are areas that came out top in terms of proportion of budgets allocated by UK marketers. And perhaps unsurprisingly, this matches to a similar degree on the right when we look at uh, the sort of perceptions of marketers and where they feel consumers are spending their time sort of websites, email, and, and paid search will come out top there. So it, 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 this is a typical picture that we see in a developed market. If you look at this picture for Asia, it looks very different. You would find uh, the left side to be a lot more disconnected from the right. So um, basically, in summary, in the UK, over the years, people have been able to um, adjust their media mix and their media, uh, their media mix across different channels fairly well to where actually consumers spend their time. So there's not much different. There's slight differences, but roughly the prioritizations um, where people, where marketers spend their money versus where people actually spend their time is kind of similar. There's only some, some smaller interesting changes, for example, outdoor. You know, not many people obviously spend advertising with outdoor, uh, time, with outdoor uh, time with outdoor advertising, but a lot of money is spent there. We'll have a look at mobile. Uh, not much time, not much money is being spent in mobile and app, but actually a lot of time uh, uh, proportionately, a lot more time proportionally is spent on mobile. So there's only slight differences in allocation of media spend versus time spend, which is a, is a sign of a, of a developed and fairly optimized market. Okay, um, looking a bit more at another developed market, particularly the US. Um, um, you can see on the left there in terms of um, percentage budget allocated or, you know, Things that come up top, you know, we've got websites, printed media, TV. Again, these are very uh, developed markets. Um, email and TV are very much uh, level pecking there. Um, to, to the right, again, looking at uh, perceptions of where audiences are spending their time. Um, it was perhaps a little surprising that this agreement for websites and email wasn't a little bit higher by comparison, um, given, given the given the results from the, from the from the last slide. And you could you could perhaps read into this that perhaps. If given free reign and unlimited budgets, practitioners would be open to attributing more budget to these particular channels. Now we just discussed mobile in the previous slide, and, and you know that's you know increasingly important channel where consumers are spending their time. But if you look at that uh, on on the right there, that comes down quite low at 29% uh, overall. But 6% of marketers in the US put it as a first choice. And obviously this will change. Uh, one of the interviewees that we spoke to in the report, uh, Facebook's Trevor Johnson, um, he said that mobile spend will outstrip desktop by the close of 2016, so sooner rather than later, uh, which means he can expect it to reach around $60 billion. So um, current spend is not reported in, in you know, and, and so there's clearly some trends going on and things will change very quickly going forward when it comes to mobile. Now, I, I, you know, it, it, on this slide, it kind of looks like the optimization job is done. Okay. Now, I just like you to sort of visualize a couple of numbers next to that. So the U.S. is a massive market, right? There's a humongous 
media dollars associated to these different channels. So imagine the total TV spend in the US. Now on the left hand side, you can see that TV has a percentage next to it about 30%. So 30% of total media budget is spent in TV. On the right hand side, you can see that only about 21% of time is actually spent in TV, which would suggest that there's about a 10% uh, mismatch, yeah? as in more media dollars allocated than people actually spending time with TV. Now, that's probably something that we can all believe because we all know that we're sort of moving away from watching TV to, to consuming media elsewhere. Now that may not seem much, but once you put the hundreds of millions of dollars against that and say, for example, and I'm probably off here, I can't, I can't remember the exact figure, but let's say it's a billion dollars in TV spend per year in the US in total. 9% or 10% of a billion, and you consider that wasted media dollars, you're actually talking about a very significant amount of money that is, strictly speaking, probably not allocated in the most optimal way. So often the detail here is, the, the crux here is in the detail. Even in, in very developed markets, you can still find uh, areas for optimization, for budget optimization that can potentially have a significant impact on overall ROI on the company. Okay, thanks for, thanks for that point there, uh, Christian. Um, so another question, you know, which, which three channels would you increase your media spend? Um, the, the result is from this, you can take away, is there's a general understanding where future trends are leading. Uh, most executives would increase uh, spending on websites, perhaps not, not a surprise given the previous research results. And that's closely followed by mobile, which is, which is somewhat reassuring, uh, as well as email, which is, uh, comes, comes up as 32% across all regions. Uh, globally, um, so globally, there's some, some interesting patterns coming out of that. Um, and there was very similar when it, when it was sort of looking at specific regions under the review. So we also asked a question, which channels would uh, executives decrease their media spend? So um, looking here, um, there seems, seems to be sort of a, an interest in decreasing spend in uh, printed media, which came out top with with 32% of, of respondents globally, and this was closely followed by direct mail and radio. And linked to this, we, um, the, the global CMO of Just Eat talked about how his company has um, a global performance team to um, understand um, exactly how to um, optimize budgets and, and you know, where to increase or decrease. Um, and and this, this performance team drives best practice through all markets from acquisition to retention. Now he thinks that there's a lot of predictability which helps to understand trends so as to, to make more sense of, of the marketing mix, at least from his perspective. Now, apart from the, the, the detailed numbers here, again, I'd like to sort of try to get you to think about this slightly differently because one of the things that we found the most interesting about these results is that people tend to decrease their media budgets in channels that they find hard to track. How do you track response to print media? It's not an easy thing to do. Same for direct mail, same for radio, um, unless you use some sort of unique call to action. They, they brand channels, they're harder to track. And so the difficulty of tracking the effectiveness of a channel, in this case, influences the perception of the marketer whether that channel actually performs well or not. When we look at uh, our clients that, that we do these sort of media effectiveness studies for in Australia and in Asia, we actually find that radio is a particularly effective channel. The ROI is actually quite good because it tends to be cheap. Yeah? Same for direct mail on average, not quite as good as radio. And print also performs quite well once you solve the tracking challenge. So that's something that we find extremely dangerous. There are old school channels that are non-digital that can actually work quite well, but Marketers have formed this perception that they're hard to track, and for some reason that means they're not effective and are decreasing spend, even though they actually carry a fairly high ROI uh, compared to even digital channels. Yeah, it's interesting as well, given given email, um, given given the popularity and effectiveness of email that we've we've noted from other reports as well, and I think. Often email is regarded as part of the furniture and, um, and marketers feel that they can get, um, or at least uh, senior management feel they can get the, the same impact with perhaps less budget, but that doesn't bode well for the long term, especially in a channel which I think you need to innovate and continue to innovate to connect and engage consumers' uh, cluttered inboxes. 
um, and progressive Marxism investing there still and coming up with um, even better um, ways of, of, of design and, and, and interactive elements. And that, Actually, that can that's, a, that's a really good point because email tends to also be one of these channels that are actually undervalued. And the best way to think about why that's the case, again, unfortunately, it's a tracking challenge. Think about, as, think about email as another display channel. It's the same channel with tracking the effectiveness of display advertising. A lot of people see display ads, but they don't necessarily click on them. But a lot of marketers are limited to tracking click, as in a last click model. The same thing happens with email. A lot more people open an email and consume the creative, which leaves an impression but they not they don't necessarily click on them. So once you implement proper tracking, you can, you can suddenly you can start attributing credit back to people who merely open an email, which still left an impression because they saw some form of message after opening it. You actually start to change the the the, the, the perception about email, and it usually starts performing a lot better than people thought. Yes, the effectiveness of email is a mobile channel as well. Um, you know, obviously people are accessing the email on the go, and the ability to, to link an email open to an in-store purchase could make a big, big difference to um, budget justifications going forward, and, and also increasing staff. Uh, separate research has found that a lot of teams are of teams of one handling global campaigns, which can be quite challenging. I could talk with you all down this, Christian. It's very interesting. Um, shall we? Shall we push on? I uh, have few, just a few slides to go still. Um, uh, there was there were some regional differences here um, uh, that came off the back of that research. Uh, Australian and New Zealand marketers were most likely to decrease media spend on email, uh, but that's not to say marketers in this region weren't increasing spend in, in other digital channels. Um, mobile um, websites and paid search were, were areas of investment they were making. And EMEA, uh, TV and um, radio were most likely to see a decrease. Um, other channels under scrutiny, similar to the global trends, were printed media and direct mail. Uh, for the US, we noted uh, print media was the highest rated uh, for a decrease in overall spend. Uh, by comparison, and this is something we'll see later on in the results, that there was uh, a much smaller percentage of the marketers that were considering decreasing spend on TV. So, you know, we're talking about um, tracking the importance of that. Obviously, learning from and improving past campaign performance is a starting point for most organizations' optimization journey. Um, so, perhaps unsurprisingly from the research here, um, most respondents rated um, optimizing campaign budget based on historical performance data. Um, that's a bit of a mouthful. Either is critical or very important. Now, you can argue the point that historical patterns provide some comfort, uh, but it's not going to help predict what your consumer wants um, in a month's time or, or even two years' time. Now, it was interesting to hear one New Zealand-based CMO talk about how they use a fast fail and scale process to generate new ideas. That is, the company is testing several new ideas at once, learning fast, and then scaling what works. Towards the bottom of the chart you can see here, you're buying programmatically across multiple devices, uh, fares, fares worse compared to the other options. Um, you know, we all know it's important, but again, it's a question about tracking. Uh, challenges such as viewability, ad fraud, and, and brand safety are really impacting on, on executives' enthusiasm. And, and actually, we had one interview interviewee that, that didn't wish to be named, uh, possibly because of the comment, talked about how programmatic side was driving him nuts with the feeling that agencies are opaque to the point that it feels very cloak and dagger. So it um, sounds quite a sort of dangerous world that this particular executive is currently living in. Now, how would you rate the effectiveness of your media spend from the following channels? So this really fits in with what we've been talking about. So. Digital channels easily garnered around three quarters of the vote worldwide, um, looking broadly at the results, not reflected in the chart here, while offline media struggled with half of executives saying it was either very or quite effective. Now looking particularly at, at the channels in, in, in the list here, um, one exception to the rule is, is TV. Um, and if you add up the, the totals here, you know, 71% of executives determined it was very or, or quite effective. 
Now, according to uh, one of our interviewees, the global CMO of Just Eat, he made the point that TV actually delivers reach and scale very quickly. And what these companies found that this is really great at growing growth online. One of the things that we found of particular interest, and, and this sort of speaks at some of the sort of complexity or the sort of dichotomy of some of the results here, was that in-store point of sale achieved top ranking. Um, and this is a particular channel that, from the other research we've conducted, that executives have, have ne been neither keen to increase or decrease investment. And looking across all territories, uh, point of sale outperformed um, in the US, Asia, and Australia and New Zealand. And I think that there's perhaps a cautionary tale here that, that the new fashionable technological shiny gadgets might not generate the ideal media mix. That's probably one of the slides where I need to disagree. Um, given that most respondents have admitted that they actually have no idea what performs well and what doesn't, and these are merely perceptions stated, as in only 20% or so are actually basing these statements on, on proper ROI analysis of different channels. We yeah. can't back up the fact that TV actually works well or is an effective channel. But if you think about what's going on in most of these organizations, is there's a massive TV spend, and there has been for the last 5, 6, 10, 20 years. It's been the major media channel for a very, very long time. It is very hard for these companies to turn around and suddenly say, actually, it probably doesn't work so well, so we've flushed a lot of money down the toilet for the last few years. Right? It's not quite that extreme, but that's the sort of situation that you feel uh, yourself faced with. Yeah? You, you have to, at some point, admit that you may have misallocated funds. And that's a great way of thinking about what media, what the real challenge about media attribution and media optimization is moving forward. Once you change your attribution model, the way you, you analyze media effectiveness, once you start basing it on ROI, um, it, it very much also becomes about cultural change. You have to address the fact that something potentially hasn't worked so well that you thought did, and there needs to be a culture for people to be able to admit that. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to effectively action uh, these kind of results. I think this also comes as part of efforts by companies to digitally transform themselves and share data across teams. We found in our research that often it's the case that departments have to get sign-off from other departments to get, a, get to get information about the consumer, which which should be jointly owned, um, and that prevents companies from getting that sort of much vaunted single customer view, or at least that better understanding of where the customer is interacting, to get that sort of joined up uh, perspective to to make those effective. Um, budget allocation and, and, and decisions and also change perceptions at a cultural level. So we, does your organization use attribution to measure marketing effectiveness? Now globally, 44% of executives use some kind of attribution, which is reassuring to a degree, while a further third do not. Um, not shown in the chart here, but, but when it comes to sort of using some kind of attribution model, the Asian marketers are the most progressive. Um, and this perhaps underlines Christine's point before that the, the media mix is a little bit different over in Asia. Obviously, mobile features a bit more highly, with 61% of Asian marketers agreeing that they use, use a model. And that's twice as much as EMEA and the US. Now, we interviewed Deborah Goldingham, who's head of marketing at MasterCard Southeast Asia, and she commented that, that her company is now looking at, at more effective tools to close the gap between what's real and what's not. Shows how progressive organizations are in this, in this region. Um, and her view is that the industry needs to take a deeper look at cost per click in particular. And um, there was also the feeling that everything is becoming too difficult to measure, whereas in the past, if you looked at the circulation figures for a magazine, you just wouldn't question it. So I would ask the, the, the people on the call today to just memorize this slide, okay? So you've just seen that 44% of marketers are using some kind of attribution model. The crux here is in the detail, and I'll get back to this slide in two more slides in the future. Good stuff, queuing it up there. So which, to what extent does your organization action attribution insights? Um, it's, I think the result here is it's a bit of a hit and miss affair. You know, worldwide, 40% of executives regularly apply attribution models to campaigns. That's the segment on the right there. One of our interviewees, Jana Mollett, she's head of brand advertising at Now TV, 
Um, she talked about how the, the, the various data sources uh, used were making it a challenge to, to aggregate and, and get that view of, of what, what, what campaign success really means. So Now TV um, uses uh, first and third party data, for example, but also internal brand tracking and linear reporting. So, um, you know, from her perspective, there's a bit of data overload, which is making it hard to see uh, consistent trends going forward. And, and this is this is always interesting to my mind. So, what well, actually, what attribution model do organisations actually use? Now, last click, as you can see here on the on the on the chart here, which looks at the global respondents, um, that dominates globally with linear and custom model modeling, not not um, following too far behind. Now, when we look at the differences by region, we we found that when it comes to the U.S., last click has really fallen out of favour, and that's used by just nine percent of marketers. Um, now, here in this particular region, executives favoured first click, and that's followed by custom modeling. Um, you could argue that this is because, obviously, as we all know, the path to purchase isn't linear anymore. People are discovering on one device, researching on another, and converting on a third. According to one global procurement director interviewed for this report, uh, they take the view that last click is actually dead, dead in the water. Um, and the problem being that it's retrospective. Um, the point that, that that particular interview he made was all too often that, that his reporting ends up in the drawer simply because a new marketing director has come along and it's all out of date. I'm glad to hear that the message has even made it to the procurement department at uh, Brighton. My <laughs> day. But look, I can tell you with absolute certainty that only the people, the 15% that are in the custom modeling section here, have it right. Neither last click, linear, position pace, time decay, other works. Every company is different. There's no quick way to success here. Every company is different. Your competitive environment is different. Your product set is different. Your campaign mix is different. Your seasonality is different. There are simply too many factors for any company to simply pick an attribution model and say, okay, last click is it or first click is it. It doesn't work like that. You have to create your own custom model to get any acceptable level of accuracy. If you go back to the slide before where you, where you sort of read that 40% of marketers think they're actually having an attribution model. Yeah, they're having an attribution model. They're having a last click attribution model, which is utterly wrong. So once you apply that, you get, you actually in the end are only left with a tiny fraction of marketers that are really basing their media mix optimization decisions on accurate figures. A great majority just simply use conjecture or what's worked last time, or use their gut feeling. And you know, if you if you if you're optimizing a small budget, that's okay. If you work for a big corporation where uh, uh, tens of millions of dollars are at stake, I think that level of 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 estimation or gut feeling approach is simply not acceptable anymore in in today's world where data is just a little bit more readily available. That's an interesting point there. Um, we conducted some recent research in, in and around attribution, and one of the things that we found was um, when it comes to um, organization skills and understanding of attribution, it's very weak. Um, and just given the complexity involved with building their own solutions, the companies are increasingly um, reliant on their vendors, um, and it's increasingly seeing vendors as a partner, because often these, these, these vendors are able to provide the necessary training to, to, to keep their staff um, to keep the stuff updated because obviously, obviously these tools are complex. Uh, customers are changing in terms of their behaviors, uh, leaping across more devices ever more quickly. So it's very hard. It's a moving feast for marketers to stay up to speed when it comes to the skills required. So which of the following does your organization use to measure media effectiveness? Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, sales impact is a popular way, um, and this was constant across all territories. Yeah, it's a constant figure, relates to the health of the business, it makes sense to a degree, and it can be widely understood by the board. Now, I think that the findings really, really here reflect the complexity involved um, of, of these other measures. Um, and according to a MasterCard contact that we interviewed, organizations need to really be looking at how they put value into every part of the customer journey and how assisted conversions are measured in the overall plan. So it's not just sales impact, which can be, in many respects, a blunt measure. Look, 
I think I would like everybody to report on sales impact because ultimately, even if you run a brand campaign, you know, um, it's about selling something. If your brand campaign doesn't support a direct response campaign further down the track or leads to a higher response rate to a direct response campaign further down in the conversion funnel, then what, what good was the brand campaign? Um, sooner or later, all campaigns need to drive sales and revenue and ROI. And if you have a proper attribution model in place, then you will be giving equal credit or, or at least some form of credit to every single touch point involved, and that uh, in, will include brand campaigns as well as direct response campaigns. So everybody should be optimizing to its sales impact. What I find baffling is that 60% of marketers think they actually can report on sales impact, but only a tiny minority of these people is actually basing their uh, 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 reporting on, 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 an, on an accurate attribution model or, or an ROI-based approach. And, and that is just sort of the, the final, I guess, um, the final straw where it becomes really, really clear how much of, of media optimization is still very much uh, conjecture. I know we're running ahead of, we're running behind a bit in terms of the slides, so I'll just try and uh, speed through the, the last term um, and just try and get the, the most salient points for audiences here. Um, this looks at uh, the results from our desk research. Uh, so previously we were looking at the survey results, um, and we looked again, as I said before, looked at the publicly available data sources to get a view of where marketers were really spending by channel and how this matched up to where audiences were spending their time. Um, and I'm not going to dwell so much on APAC and um, audiences for now. That's going to be a webinar that Chris will be running on the 18th. If you're interested, feel free to register. I'm sure you can find the details on, on the data delicious uh, emails and, and site. Now, looking particularly at the US and the UK, the UK, um, there were some significant disparities despite it being a very mature market in terms of uh, media budget allocation. Now, we found that marketers are spending 62% of their total budgets offline, even though the marketers were only, or consumers or audiences were only spending their, half their time offline. So there was, a, there was an in, imbalance there. Um, and of course, this highlighted an underinvestment in online channels. So there's a smaller proportion of spend going on digital compared to where consumers were spending their time. In the US, there's less of a disparity, of course. Um, online and offline totals generally tend to you know, be a relative match. There's a 3% disparity either way, which is almost statistically insignificant. Now, looking back at our survey, there perhaps a number of reasons for, for the findings um, when it comes to budget um, disparity. Um, I think budgets are still largely allocated on the basis of historical performance rather than customer behavior. Um, we also found from, from our research and in, in survey into marketers, only a third of marketers can claim to have a good idea of where consumers are spending their time. At the same time, only half can measure this to at least some extent. Now, I think this is a great overview of, of trends at a sort of macro level, but I wanted to um, look more specifically at uh, the UK and US, and, unless, Kristen, you wanted to jump in and make a comment here. No, look, I just, I just want to, you know, it seems small, but keep in mind we're talking about 19 billion pounds, of, potential, of which potentially 10% are not optimally allocated. So take 10% of 19 billion, and think about that number, and that's a huge number that could potentially be spent in a more effective way. Absolutely, yeah. I, I could put it into context there, Christian. Thanks very much. So, more specifically, um, you know, in the UK, we, we looked at total spend online and offline by time spent. This looks more specifically by channel now. And it was interesting to see that TV takes up a quarter of offline budgets, but there's still some misalignment with time spent. That's the, the top uh, the top response here. Uh, so 26% of budgets TV takes up, um, and share of media time is actually a little bit higher. In terms of uh, spending trends, uh, digital display and paid social are up by 12 and 13% respectively, which is uh, very strong. Um, and it's easy to see that uh, executives' heads have been turned by the promises made by the platforms, which can sometimes trump uh, traditional media in terms of measurability. Now, you could say with spend up by 5%, TV is experiencing somewhat of a renaissance. 
um, new technologies are increasing the measurability of ads. Um, we've observed that e-consultancy brands like Betfair um, delivering close to real-time in-play ads uh, at half-time with, with live betting odds. Direct mail, uh, which is also highlighted here, represents 10% uh, of annual budgets, uh, and that's seen, uh, seen a small decline. Um, it's still an important channel to the extent that even pure play, pure play brands like Amazon send out print gift guides uh, catalogs during the festive season. Um, at the same time, Google often targets small businesses with door drops. Now, print shows the largest discord with 19% spend and 3% of media time, and perhaps for this reason is a channel that most significant, seeing a most significant decline compared to others under review. Now, in terms of online digital display and paid social, um, you know, they're consistently the fastest growing for, for advertising due, due to their innate measurability and adaptability to, to sort of prevailing conditions of the, of the day. Now, the United States, as I mentioned previously, out of all the territories covered, the research found that the U.S. strikes somewhat of a, a balance, somewhat, you could say the right balance between spend and audience media time, although there are some disparities on a per-channel basis. As you can see here, TV remains hugely popular. Um, it makes up a third of marketers budgets, and that totals some, something of the, of the line of 70,600 million. Um, and this compares with 37% of time spent by audiences on the channel. Now, in other channels, low spend in radio, compared with the presumed 21% of customer dwell time on the channel, is reflected in other, in other territories. And while, a popular, while it's popular with audiences, radio is generally held in low esteem as an engagement opportunity by marketers. Um, by comparison, print remains important, and while not enjoying a large slice of spend, it's proportionally equal to that allotted to digital channels. So, in terms of, Christian, I don't know if you wanted to jump in there, I can move on to the conclusion and action points. No, please move on, I know we're running out of time. Great, okay, so conclusion and action points. So regardless of whether it leans towards offline or online, all marketers have an imbalance between where they spend budget and where consumers spend time. Now, custom attribution needs to be more greatly adopted to help identify poor performing channels and optimize budget. So some of the actions could be sort of investigating custom attribution solutions, for example. Now, marketers can deliver, as a result of the back of this, this investment, better customer experiences uh, by speaking to the channels, uh, by speaking to audiences in the channels they're active in. You know, consumers increasingly have high expectations and expect to be remembered and treated as individuals. So this is really putting pressure on, on marketers right now. And I think there's just, this research has really provided some valuable insight to me into areas that haven't really been explored to, to the extent that they should have done. And I think that, as we've said here, just a small percentage misalignments really can have a massive impact on, 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 on budgets and, and the actual amount of money lost uh, not being optimized. And I trust, hopefully, this has served to whet your appetite to download and view the report in, in more detail. Um, thanks very much. And Christine, do you want to sign off at all? Yeah, maybe just a, a closing comment. Look, I, I just want to acknowledge that um, obviously the, the, the comparison or making the leap from uh, a discrepancy between budget spend versus time spend to um, media budget uh, not being allocated effectively, there's obviously a bit of a leap going on here. Um, and um, But it's the best, the best uh, proxy that we could come up with. Um, on average, when we start doing media attribution and media optimization for our clients, we find everything between 10 to 30% of inefficiencies in, in, in the first year. And so depending on the size of your media budget, that can easily add up to um, uh, several hundred thousand uh, worth of dollars or millions even. So look, if you're interested, uh, Datalicious is very good at media attribution, media mix optimization. We would love to help out. Feel free to get in touch and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That's great, really enjoyed it. I think as we're, we're running over by a serious amount of time, I don't think we're going to have any um, have an opportunity to um, ask any questions today. But uh, if you've got any uh, questions, feel free to uh, email myself or, or Christian uh, following up. Uh, Christian, I don't think your email address is on this deck. Are you able to just uh, speak it out now? 
Yeah, please feel free to um, uh, either contact me uh, on LinkedIn and um, I'll respond there. Uh, contact us on uh, Twitter. Uh, the handle is at Datalicious or email me personally at cbartens, that's C-B-A-R-T-E-N-S at datalicious.com. Thank you. Okay, Alan. fantastic. Okay, terrific. Thanks all.